rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Not that I wish to imply you have been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving of a rest, and all the effort in the world would have gone to waste until... Well, let's just say your hour has come again. The right man in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and smell the ashes. Half-Life 2 is, no doubt about it, the biggest game to ever grace this planet. It was a revolutionary first-person shooter which heavily surprised everyone at the time. The sequel to the critically acclaimed Half-Life, this game is often regarded as one of the greatest video games of all time with its immersive storytelling, innovative gameplay mechanics, and groundbreaking graphics courtesy of the Source engine, Half-Life 2 set a new standard for the FPS genre and left a lasting impact on the gaming industry. Going from this to this is nothing but mind-blowing. I really love the Source engine, it allows the developers to breathe new life to the game they are crafting, and to this day, this game still looks pretty. This game was, is, and always will be ahead of its time. I mean, this was released in 2004, and we had this? What? I think it's only fair to consider this game a technical marvel. Anyways, there is no doubt that this game is considered by many a masterpiece. You've probably heard it that many times, and yet you still wish to learn why is that the case, even though most likely you already know the answer. So, it's time for us to review this game just to reminisce of its greatness. Of course, every masterpiece does have flaws. No game is perfect. So let's get started. Right off the bat, we notice the graphical fidelity taking a big leap compared to the original. Even almost 20 years later, this game still looks amazing. The Source engine was probably the best thing they could have come up with for a sequel. Yes, it wasn't necessary to have a sequel to a beloved title be made in a brand new engine, but I do have to say, this is mind-blowing for a 2004 game. Point insertion is a lot like Black Mesa Inbound, where we get introduced to the world of Half-Life. This time, however, you are now restricted to a tram ride. Sure, you start in a train, but very quickly it allows you to roam the map without being stuck in one place. Therefore, I actually like this chapter compared to Half-Life's 5 minute introduction. We are quickly introduced to City 17. The player naturally assumes that this is where we will be spending most of our time early on in the game. There are so many things going on. I really like that when we approach NPCs, each of them has something to say. Don't drink the water. They put something in it to, to make you forget. I don't even remember how I got here. I thought so much. I see they took your suitcase too. They can't get away with this much longer. Establish my administration here in the citadel so thoughtfully We're working up the nerve to go on. Our benefactors. I've been proud to call City 17. Doctor Breen again. I was hoping so, I'd seen the last of him in City 14. I wouldn't say that too loud. This is his base of operations. But among these new faces, we do see a similar face. About that beer I owed you. It's me, Gordon. Barney from Black Mesa. Hey, sorry for the scare. I had to put on a show for the cameras. Oh, hey, here's the original version of Barney and uh, Dr. Kleiner. Uh, I don't remember you from Half-Life 1, so I'm just going to pretend that I know you, just so, you know, I can immerse myself into this game. Besides that one reunion, there's also something that we can do in this chapter. You see, this is a new engine. What's new in this one? Well, I'll tell you. Physics! This game will show us in a couple of moments just how cool physics can be. This chapter also establishes the combine and how very much it reminds me of communism in a way. It's very clear these citizens are suffering and are in a dire need of change. The chapter ends with a chase scene, quote unquote. It's not really a chase scene, but it's the best way to describe it. The Combine are now fully aware of how much of an outlier you are. We Dr. also meet Freeman, Alex who saves Gordon in the nick of time. I talked about so much stuff right. about this first chapter, <laughs> unlike Half-Life, you know, OG Half-Life. It map. is actually baffling. In about 15 minutes, that's how much it took me to finish this chapter, it introduced so many ideas and the plot of it seems to take down this region. For first time players, we I simply had no idea of what we were about to experience. Goodness, Gordon Freeman. 
It really is you, isn't it? Alright, this chapter is quite uneventful, it still introduces us to the world. Alex is a very lovely side character that has a very beautiful voice. Dr. Klein's lab is probably the most interesting set piece so far. There's so much to look at and interact with. We even have a small but fine dialogue sections between the main cast. Although, I'm curious about that cat. Also, check this shit out. Apparently, head crabs are no animals to keep at home like cats or dogs. Dr. Kleiner, your taste to animals is rather strange. I'm with Barney on this one. There's this teleporter that we are going to use first of all. Oh no, I wonder. Will something bad happen to this teleporter and- Oh, uh, I guess not. Okay then, I'm more than ready for this guy. God damn it! We are being teleported to quite the different areas of this world. And I'm not sure if I should be happy or bummed out for this guy to only appear once and it's right here. Probably happy because this piece of shit scared my pants away and now I'm left with shit all over the floor. Well damn, the teleporter didn't work. Who could have seen that coming? I guess we will be traveling by feet. We get one last party moment where he gives us the crowbar that we all know and love. We have a very brief section where we have to get away from the combine. We even jump on trains like it's subway surfers. This chapter starts with a couple getting harassed, that's all I need to say. Root Canal takes you through the sewer, but not yet. The beginning of this one has you escape from the combine. You also get your first gun in this chapter, a pistol. Every combat opportunity is engaging and fun. It also makes you think quickly as the enemies are trying to either set a trap for you or ambush you. Or you also blow up barnacles. Also get ready to see many many dead bodies because there are a lot of them. So remember how this game now has physics you can play around with? Well, now it's a puzzle. This one is simple, just balance the spore so you can jump on the other side. And while it is such an easy puzzle, it is an excellent one and it showcases how physics work really well. I know other game engines have more refined physics stuff, but I feel like developers just don't make use of them as much as some older games. And especially such as, you know, in the cases is Half-Life. Physics aren't just used for puzzles, they can also be used for fun. For example, in this room there are many explosive barrels and normal barrels. Blowing one barrel causes a chain of exploding barrels to, uh, um, explode. And since every normal barrel flying in whatever direction ends up going. A new enemy is introduced here, Manhacks. They're flying robots that have sharp spinning blades that can cut through a lot of things, even humans. And they can be annoying sometimes to how many of them appear at once, but otherwise they are just fine. If you were missing zombies then don't worry, they make an appearance near the end of the chapter. However, they will have a more prominent presence later on. The chapter ends with Gordon driving the airboat that we had heard about earlier. For the few moments where you drive this thing on this chapter are brief and they serve as more of a way for the player to get used to vehicles, which are a new addition to Half-Life, and a welcome one at that. I think now is a good time to say that the airboat is so goddamn slippery. Holy crap, you just unintentionally stripped all over the place when you try to turn left or right. I don't mind the slippery nature, but for many people, they would find uh, the controls of this thing pretty difficult to handle. We get on another physics puzzle. This one is not as straightforward as the other one, and you even have to search the area for more of these blue barrels. On your journey to Black Mesa East, you have to stop a couple of times to do some work. Sometimes the game will literally stop you on progressing to do some, something random, but we do get glimpses of what's going on around the world. We now have direct confirmation of a disruptor in our midst, one who has acquired an almost messianic reputation in the minds of certain citizens. His figure is synonymous with the darkest urges of instinct, ignorance and decay. Some of the worst excesses of the Black Mesa incident have been laid directly at his feet. And yet, unsophisticated minds continue to imbue him with romantic power, giving him such dangerous poetic labels as the one free man, the opener of the way. Let me remind all citizens of the dangers of magical thinking. We have scarcely begun to climb from the dark pit of our species' evolution. Let us not slide backward into oblivion, just as we have finally begun to see the light. If you see this so-called free man, report him. Civic deeds do not go unrewarded, and contrarywise, complicity with his cause will not go unpunished. Be wise. Be safe. Be aware. 
story with this chapter is pretty clear that you're an active threat to the Combine and not, they, they do not like that the citizen think highly of you. Anyways, you forcefully open the gate that was stopping you so now you can progress. The Combine tries to stop you but to avail. They even send bombs to mess up with your controls to send your airboat flying but they fail. So they decided to stop you from progressing again. Well that ride was short lived. I will say this, it is a good enough way to balance gameplay between the sections where you drive the airboat and the sections where you engage in combat and guess the combine. You need balance. After that they decide to bomb your ass so now you have to maneuver this already pretty hard to control sometimes vehicle to dodge the bombs dropped by the gumption. It's actually kind of fun. Generally having fun with this game and this is chapter 4 out of 13. What else can they do to top this level of engagement? Although I will definitely say that this part right here is just bad. Why do the developers think that having to stay on these things just to go through the opening to move forward was a good idea? This is very clunky and if you failed which you are prone to, you have to go back a good bit just so you can do it again until you succeed. A bit of bad level design. And sometimes I'm always so close to making these jumps. It's either I don't see the path or, or I slow down for a second, thus killing my momentum or something. I find this odd. Anyways, after all that craziness, it's time to take a break with a small physics puzzle where you have to put enough items inside here so you can lift the ramp up. Players who love exploring will find this ladder here, which leads to an oven that is heavy enough to li almost lift the ramp up. For the end stretch of the chapter, your airport is now equipped with a minigun from a gunship, so you can fight back while still driving. The chapter ends with a fight between you and this godforsaken helicopter that bothered you the whole chapter. This thing is pretty tanky and can catch you off guard sometimes with its desperate attack which is spamming the whole arena with bombs. All that's left is to lift this gate and jump through it. Bruh. This chapter is fairly short. We get to meet the characters that we saw earlier in a red letter day in person. Judith Mossman seems a bit too excited to work alongside me. She also loves yapping, like, a lot. Eli Vance is apparently jealous of my skincare routine. My god, you haven't changed one iota. How do you do it? And we reunite with Alex for what it felt like eternity. I guess you proved you can handle yourself out there. There's nothing Gordon can't handle, with the possible exception of you. Dad, please. Uh... I'm sorry Eli, but are you insinuating that I suck at banging women? Well anyways, we move along past whatever that was and into tutorial land because we are being introduced to the zero point energy field manipulator. Or simply put, the gravity gun. This is probably the best weapon ever made, it's so much fun using this thing. And it plays around physics pretty well, any object that can be grabbed can be used as a projectile. It's literally the best way to save you know, to stock up on ammo and stuff like that. Unfortunately, fun times are over since the combine have found us out of nowhere and are now invading the area. And by faith, we have to go through Ravenhold. Earlier, Alex made a quick mention about this zone, and all I can think of is foreshadowing. I was proving right, but like, what's so bad about Ravenhold? <laughs> Yeah, by the way, my game just does this sometimes when I played it. It happened during my first playthrough and it happened again. I can only assume this is a bug, most likely, since I've seen mentions of this instance I'm paying to others. Sorry. Anyways, Ravenholm is peak Half-Life and we're halfway through the game. I never thought Half-Life was a horror game, more as an action survival. And while Ravenholm is not really horror, it is horror adjacent. That being said, I think Half-Life is the only action survival game that makes me randomly shit myself because of the sound design. The sound design carries Ravenholm a lot and my god is phenomenal. The mood just changes completely the second you step out into this abandoned town. There are dead corpses everywhere. Sure, there were corpses in the canals, but not to this degree. On top of that, this town is ravaging with zombies. You hear a voice, a human voice, talking about things that don't make sense. Who is this? Another life to save? This is Father Grigori. Right off the bat, 
This guy is an odd and unstable character, and to be honest, looks shady and untrustworthy. This character might be Valve's way of explaining these contraptions used for elimination. I do have one problem. How were you supposed to notice that there is a door here that can lead you to a lever that deactivates the electricity? By sheer luck? I have no reason to wander around here. Ah, whatever. Speaking of traps, the game lets you play around with these and I gotta say, they are pretty fun. In terms of gameplay, I really like Ravenholm. It's very fun playing around the things you can do here. And if you want to only use the gravity gun, then you can also do that since there, since there is an achievement that, which, you know, it encourages you to use just the gravity gun, which is pretty nice. This chapter also introduces fast zombies. As the name suggests, they are fast as fuck. And I just now realize just how long it takes for you to finally get a shotgun. Anyways, the fast zombies are very scary, both in sound design and also just in combat, because they are fast and they can catch you off guard real quick. And before we continue, let's not forget the poisonous zombie. I really hate the head crab variant because not for any reason, it's just a regular head crab, but a poisonous one. It's just that I'm always startled when they make a noise out of nowhere and I'm just minding my own business. Like, the second I hear that, sound I just shit my pants <laughs> there's a section where you have to hold off yourself from becoming flesh-eating meat after all that you finally get to meet this guy up close although I gotta say that guy looks like shit but I won't judge a priest's choice of guns father Grigori escorts Gordon to the mines and while doing that we fight off hordes of zombies it kind of feels a bit like a uh, left for dead if I'm being honest just the hordes of zombies appearing out of nowhere in the end, we have to say goodbye to this mysterious guy who we just barely met and we got to know and proceeds to disappear through the fire while laughing like a maniac. Now, you would think the chapter would end here, but no, it still goes on. We have the mines, which is filled with zombies as much as Ravenholm. And while it is a decent section, it's not as interesting as the town itself. We finally see a light of hope illuminated from afar, but the chapter is not over, which is crazy. It's fairly obvious that we are no longer in Ravenholm. We actually get a new gun as well? We ha and we have a new enemy in the form of snipers, which were in half a one as well. This chapter introduced so many guns and so many enemies slash NPCs, it's just crazy. Before the chapter ends, we eliminate a bunch of combines attacking some rebels. Wait, wouldn't you know it? Trige at Dawn plays here, but one must wonder why such an iconic song would play for some nobody who got shot. I guess it's the best moment to say that this song represents the fact that we have experienced Ravenholm and it's and it's horrors, and we can finally feel relieved to see some people that are associated with Alex. This is just my interpretation, okay? Also, one last thing about Father Grigori. This character never gets mentioned by anyone, only Gordon knows about his existence. He just came and went. I think it goes to show why this chapter is still one of many people's favorite. It's even mine as well. Overall, We Don't Go to Ravenholm is a brilliant chapter. Its gameplay is quite methodical. It can also be scary at times. Every section is fun and unique and Father Grigori is a mysterious fan favorite character. I love this chapter and many others did as well. We now drive a car! Honestly, driving the car is so much more fun than you know, driving the airboat. For starters, it's not as slippery, which is a significant upgrade, but, but it's still a little slippery, but it's not as bad. We can also run into enemies, which is funny. We have a new enemy. The ant lions are a nice way to break from all the zombies we had to fight through in Ravenholm. We take our car and travel to this place. This place is also the same place that gives us the rocket launcher. Now we are tasked to delete this gunship from its existence. Honestly, driving the car is probably the most fun I ever had doing in this chapter, and I really have no idea why. We control so well, and the path I take is very twisty at times. Also, in the very same chapter, we control, um, this thing, I don't know. Suddenly we are under a totally stable bridge. Yep, nothing wrong under the bridge, guys. All we need to do is unplug that and return to your car. Now, I wonder why the combine didn't just take the car away or something, or at least pop the tires. That way I couldn't progress as quickly, but I guess they are just dumb. <laughs>
this place doesn't look like sand. Did I lie about the sand? I guess they did, but anyways, you are stopped again to do a small mission. Put a berries on this thing to go back on driving on the main road. Alright, Gordon, you're doing quite good, so how about you destroy a gunship? Wow, well, already? This fight can be a bit annoying considering that the gunship can just shoot your rocket and oh no, no more rocket for you, sorry. Otherwise, it's literally something we have done a bunch of times, like, come on, man. Oh, yeah, here's the sand that I was promised. Also, R.I.P. Laszlo, I don't know who you are, but I heard that you were the finest man. You, you are the. F oh, <laughs> But I heard you were the finest mind of your generation, so you must have done something incredible. R.I.P. in the chat, boys. Oh yeah, there's also a boss for- Huh? The boss of Antlias? Well, now he's dead. Don't worry, this guy is not that easy to beat. It's a fine enough mini boss for the middle of the game. After this fight, you get a new weapon. The bug bait! Um, you can control Antlions with this thing and it uh, makes this very weird noise. Also, can I just say, why the fuck does everyone treat me like a god when I'm doing something like it's the most spectacular thing they ever witnessed? The Freeman has done wonderfully well for destroying an alien boss ball. The Freeman excels at throwing balls. The Freeman is balling on god. Oh yeah, the bog bay is good at throwing directly at the combine so they can be disgusted by your actions. And then die. Honestly, I actually kinda like this part. It's amusing controlling the end lines and seeing them ravaging the combine. Did someone say another gunship to destroy? My favorite activity! Look, they are kissing. We are finally reached Nova Prospect, even though I was fairly sure we were there already, but like, whatever. Yeah, even in an area populated with combine, this place is still infested with zombies and crap like that. It's also very convenient that there are holes everywhere for the end lines to spawn in. That totally does look like a boss fight arena. Oh god damn it. Yeah, I'll be honest, this chapter consists of combine after combine after combine fail ambushes. All we are doing a slaughter combine which is fine it's very fun to play through but it's boring to talk about so let's just get to the next chapter <laughs> all right here's the thing entanglement doesn't have its own chapter per se it's more so a continuation of nova prospect even though fandom wiki says it otherwise which i know fandom wikis aren't the best thing in general considering many things but at least the half five wikis there are kind of okay at least from what i've seen so i guess by all means necessary we are still talking about Nova Prospect. Alright, let's get back to the show. Alex is back. Her plan is to rescue Eli. Now, if I'm going to be honest, I have no idea how we will manage that, but... Sure, you go, girl. We get a father and daughter scene between the two of them. It's a bittersweet scene that gives us a glimpse more into their relationship. I find it cool that we have Alex working with us getting these gates open, because this part is more of a breathing air type of segment. All this builds up to a hold up area where we wait for Alex to get to us. What's cool is that those stories that have been everywhere being a bit of annoyance can now be used to be by your side. This is quite a short segment, but it's not a bad one by any means. Sorry it took me so long. Glad to see you're okay. Let's see if we can find Mossman. It looks like this station might give me better access. There she is. Wait a minute. How'd she... It's from your area. I I'm not calling about that. What's she up to? You promised you weren't going to touch Eli. Oh my the God. soldiers were a bit overzealous, I admit, but he was too tempting a prize to simply turn loose. Especially in the absence of Gordon Freeman. You would have had Freeman if you'd been patient and just waited for my signal. Ugh. We weren't entirely sure you were ever going to get around to that. Human loyalties being what they are. Dr. Br- As I have stated before, you have to let Eli come around on his own. I have Can't known Dr. Vance far longer than you, my dear. I'm afraid your feelings for him may have blinded you. Feelings? This has nothing to do with feelings. It's a simple truth that when Eli believes this in our... This is not open to debate, Dr. Mossman. Doctor, please. So sorry, Judith. I'm all out of time. Damn her! I don't believe this! Wow, a betrayal. Honestly, I wasn't sure what to feel like when I played this for the first time. Shock, anger, sadness, confusion. I just found it unbelievable that Dr. Mossman would betray us. 
when there was no signs of her being undercover. All that betrayal and some electricity and we have another hold up segment. Okay, we already did this area. Why are we doing this again? It's always a bit awkward just, you know, running around the damn place so I can put the turrets back to normal. And this one also doesn't take that much time, but it's still a bit weird for me. And check this one out! There's quite a lot of people for one ambush and you can still get curb stomped like bugs getting squashed. Hey, hold on, we're confronting Judith! God damn, well, this is gonna be a heated discussion. All about you and Breen. What? You've been a spy for the Combine the whole time. W what are you talking about? Damn it! Move back, Mossman. We're coming in. Alex, whatever you may think, I assure you, I have worked to protect your father. Shut up and be glad you're still some use to us. We're going to reconfigure this teleport and get the hell out of here. You see, we're working to the same end. I've already reprogrammed the modulator to emulate a Zen Relay. That's my father's work you stole. It's my work too! And I had to prove to Dr. Breen that your father would be the most valuable member of any research effort going Enough forward. Enough of your here. bullshit! Look, Gordon, there's my dad. I'm going to bring him in. You found Eli? No thanks to you. Just enter the coordinates for Dr. Kleiner's lab and let's get moving. But we need access to the teleport platform and we're locked out. I'll take care of that. Let's get going. Oh my god. Uh, are my eyes deceiving me? I just saw Alex going inside where we came from. What the fuck? Oh god, they another hold off. Can't this be the final one? I had given up hope of ever seeing you again. I was afraid we might not make it either. I think the teleport exploded just as we were porting out. Indeed it did, and the repercussions were felt far and wide, but that was over a week ago. A week? I guess we cannot catch a break anytime soon. Alex? Gordon? Alright, let me make my stance on these motherfuckers. They're good, but they're bad at the same time. And they're especially good at getting in the way. All hail the free man, my ass. I want some breathing room. In a retrospective, I guess there isn't much about this chapter. It's mostly us traveling somewhere where we have the rebels following us. The chapter consists of encounter after encounter after encounter with the combine. And the rebels with some breathing room in between and a hold off segment. I have said it once, I'll say it again. Fun to play through boring to talk about. Although, we do meet Alex again to make things interesting, and I think this is the best hold-off segment in this uh, game. And then Alex gets kidnapped. Great, I think we screwed our odds. Alright viewer, listen closely. You are a part of a very important imp operation. Operation Beer Over. Yeah, Beer Over. We need to save Barney, that's what. He's surrounded by snipers. I mean, I didn't miss these guys one bit. Sent them home where they came from. All right, please. Still gives me limited clearance. Did you hear a cat just now? What cat? This chapter is more action focused than pretty much every chapter so far. It showcases the uprising pretty well and it feels similar to a war. 
There is a lot happening even inside the main building where we spent our time in. We have to pretty much deactivate three generators. While we are doing that, we encounter traps of many kinds and ambushes plenty. This whole segment ends with us blowing up another gunship. Now we are blowing up Shriders and these things make such unsettling noises when they die. I honestly enjoy the moments with the Striders, it gives us more time to play with the rocket launcher but on a different enemy this time, and they are pretty scary sometimes. Dog came crashing through the plaza, knocking over walls and I think he's looking for Alex, he seems to have it set in his head that she's in the Citadel. I figured Alex wouldn't want him getting any deeper in trouble but hell, you try stopping him. Hey dog, come on there, you can't get through that way. Damned. I think he wants you to go through, Gordon. You'd better hurry. And if you see Dr. Breen, tell him I said. You know what? That's a pretty funny and creative way of censoring a fuck you. <laughs> These last two chapters are mostly spent just looking at the citadel itself and the horrors behind it. A jaw dropping scene where the game takes you to look around the goddamn citadel. Don't worry, you are still in control of your character in the form of just looking around. However, we do spend time playing around with an upgraded gravity gun. Holy hell, this thing is OP. Just imagine seeing someone run at you with this thing. You're screwed. I'm pretty sure these guys were shooting bricks when facing Gordon. At last. I wish I could say this was a pleasant surprise, but it's neither a surprise nor, as you will surely agree, very pleasant. Well, I am nothing if not pragmatic. Well, Dr. Freeman, under other circumstances, I like to think we might have been able to work together in an atmosphere of mutual trust and respect. Certainly judging from your brief tenure at Black Mesa while I was its administrator, you showed every promise of becoming a valuable and productive contributor to the scientific process. And yet, I'm not sure what spurred you to it. But there is really no place in this enterprise for a rogue physicist. What's wrong with being a rogue physicist? I can still do science, it's just that I'm more capable than your ass will ever be. Your mentors are partly to blame, of course. My disappointment in Eli Vance and Isaac Kleiner is far greater than my sorrow of your unfortunate choice of career path. In a way, I suppose you could not have done otherwise. Who knows what seeds of iconoclasm they planted when you were young and gullible, but while they certainly share a great part of the responsibility for the recent troubles, it is you alone who have chosen to act with such willful disregard for humanity's future. Uh, I think humanity's fucked either way based on the current status of what's happening, but yeah, go on. Tell me, Dr. Freeman, if you can. You have destroyed so much. What is it exactly that you have created? Can you name even one thing? I thought not. Really, bro? That's your comeback? I was fresh out of MIT as far as I'm concerned. I didn't have enough time to create shit. I have laid the foundation for humanity's survival. And not as we have narrowly defined ourselves, but as something greater than we could ever imagine. Something we can now only begin to glimpse. I think humanity was doing fine before the Black Mesa incident, so I don't know who you think you are when you fail to take care of this CD14 that I've heard about. I've seen is also beyond words, Breen. Genocide. Indescribable evil. Good God. Well, if it isn't Gordon Freeman at last. What's this? I'll put it over there. You have my gratitude, Doctor. First you lead me straight to the doorstep of my oldest friend, and then you deliver yourself. 
if I'd known you were going to come straight up to my office, I wouldn't have bothered hunting you in the first place. Having both of you in my keeping ensures I can dictate the terms of any bargain I care to make with a combine. <laughs> Dr. Breen. Huh. Wallace. Yes, Judith, what is it? The bargain we should be making is for Eli's life so he can continue his research. Thanks to you, we have everything we need in that regard. You're more than qualified to finish his research yourself. What neither you nor I can't do is convince that rabble in the streets to give up their senseless struggle. Yet Eli refuses to speak the words that would save them all. Save them? For what? Eli, if you won't do the right thing for the good of all people, maybe you'll do it for one of them. Alex, I need... Dad. Gordon? No. God damn you, Bring you let her go. That's all up to you, my old friend. Will you let your stubborn short-sightedness doom the entire species, or will you give your child the chance her mother never had? <laughs> How dare you even mention her! Oops, sorry guys, looks like the game is lagging. Probably because Dr. Breen talks mad shit about Alex's mother, but that's what I call a villain. Who, who are you to talk about someone's mother, bitch? Alex, my dear, you have your mother's eyes, but your father's stubborn nature. You haven't seen a bit of it yet. Really? Well, let's see how well it serves you on the far side of a combined portal. Go ahead, Bree. <laughs> if that's the worst you can do, send us both through your portal. Oh, it's hardly the worst. But you might find that hard to believe once you get there. It isn't necessary. I agree. It's a total waste. Fortunately... The Resistance has shown it is willing to accept a new leader. And this one has proven to be a fine pawn for those who control him. No! Don't listen to him, Gordon! How about it, Dr. Freeman? Did you realize your contract was open to the highest bidder? Gordon would never make any kind of deal with you. I understand if you don't wish to discuss this in front of your friends. I'll send them on their way, and then we can talk openly. Don't struggle, honey. Dad, I'm so sorry. Alex. Sooner. Judith, what do you think you're doing? We're doing what I could never do alone. We're stopping you. Yes. Oh shit, Judith never betrayed Charles, us. Get in here. They know you betrayed them. They'll turn on you. Judith, Dr. Mossman, please. I'm sorry, Wallace. You're all out of time. Don't... Dad, hang on. You fool! Watch out, he's gonna- No! Dad! Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about me, honey. There's no time, Alex. He's on his way to the portal. You must be joking. I can't possibly- There he is! Oh, all right. Damn it, if that's what it takes. Just hurry. He's right behind me. Oh, shit. Did he forget about the gravity gun? What a moron, that would be your downfall. Also, do I smell a boss fight? A pathetic final boss fight? Well, I never. Hippity hoppity, looks like Valve's continues their tradition of making shitty boss fights for Half Life. They have been on a roll, as far as I'm concerned. Anyways, yep, you need to do some platforming and then shoot uh, some. You need to shoot balls at Dr. Breen, yes. Yo, Alex! Yeah, uh, I do not think we have enough. Time, Dr. Freeman? Is it really that time again? It seems as if you only just arrived. You've done a great deal in a small time span. You've done so well, in fact, that I've received some interesting offers for your services. 
Ordinarily, I wouldn't contemplate them, but these are extraordinary times. Hmm? <laughs> Rather than offer you the illusion of free choice, I will take the liberty of choosing for you. If and when your time comes round again. I do apologize for what must seem to you an arbitrary imposition, Dr. Freeman. I trust it will all make sense to you in the course of... Well, I'm really not at liberty to say. In the meantime, this is where I get off. Half-Life 2 is, no doubt about it, a masterpiece that revolutionized the gaming industry. I cannot believe this game has been released in 2004. It's a bit surreal to play this game, considering the year of release when the game still looks good, still plays excellent, and still has an amazing story that definitely needs a continuation. I wish I experienced this in 2004, but alas, here we are. While it does have its quirks from time to time, I cannot deny that this game does so many things right, that the pros outweigh the cons. So please, for the people who haven't played this game, or if you know anyone who hasn't played this game, then uh, uh, do it! Force them to play it! Force yourself to play if you haven't! And no, saying that you're broke is not an excuse. I mean, this game just goes on sale for one era for crying out loud. So go and play it! Now! Now, and if you did play it, then play it again! In the meantime, this is where I take off. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you next time with the Half-Life 2 episodes. Have a great day, or evening. Lamar? Lamar? Blast that little... Where did she get to?